Hi, I'm Dr. V. I'm Chief of the Spine Pain Program at Bloor Pain Specialists, and today I'm going to be talking about MRI. Well, it's an excellent question, but it doesn't always need treatment. In some cases, the joints are completely asymptomatic. In fact, when we see that joint on the MRI, we have to ask ourselves, does it matter clinically? Does it matter to the patient? We'll do a physical exam, we can push on the joint just as you can push on a scraped palm. And you'll say, hey, that hurts, that don't touch that. Well, when you push on a joint and ask a, and maneuver the patient to close that joint as we push into it, the patient will say, ah, oh, that hurts, don't do that. Well, that identifies a yes, that facet hypertrophy is symptomatic. But in other cases, we push on a joint, the patient says, nope, I don't feel anything. That's not it. And we believe them. Because they're the only people, you know, everyone can only feel their own symptoms. We're our own sensor for pain. And so when a patient identifies that, no, this is not the source of my pain, we don't do anything about it because it's not symptomatic. And the MRI finding alone is an identification of what they look like. It doesn't say anything about their function. It doesn't say this is strong, this is weak, this is itchy, this is painful. It's just a picture. It is information that we can use clinically to identify what's bothering the patient. Now, there are other structures around the joint. There are muscles. There's a disc that's cushioning the, the two uh, vertebrae. There's a ligament beside the joint. There's the nerves that are passing through. There are a slew of other structures that be, could be causing symptoms. But on its own, we don't treat just the imaging, just the MRI results. We have to see that this matters to a patient. In some cases, people do need surgery. You know, the, the joint can grow and grow and grow. As it grows, it grows in a 3D way. And we've all seen people who have arthritis of their finger, and those fingers are no longer straight. As the joint grows, the finger starts to change angle. So sometimes with the joints of the spine, as they grow and grow and grow, the vertebrae slide along each other. They're no longer aligned in a nice tube for the spine to dangle down. And in fact, as they grow larger and larger, those vertebrae, the rings of bone, slide along each other and form more or less the Olympic sign, where there's less space in the center for nerves to pass through. This can be dangerous for the nerves, for the spinal cord, and some people can cause spinal cord injury or even paralysis. And in those cases, sometimes it's an emergency to have surgery, but facet growth is not a process that happens overnight. It takes years. So those emergencies tend to happen in the background of not having much space to begin with and then having an injury, a slip and fall, a sudden acceleration, deceleration event, being fatigued and not, new, uh, not moving in a normal way. The growth on its own puts people at risk and over time can compromise some of those nerves and their function by pinching them slowly, slowly, slowly. In those cases, that's where surgery is done. Sometimes the arthritic nature of those joints is treated with surgery, but that is typically a last resort. Sometimes those joints are fused, sometimes the edges of them are shaved, so a large joint can shave down the edges to create more space by making the joint smaller, although this sometimes causes some instability and the joint is fused to prevent mobility and instability in some cases. Alternatively, those joints can also be injected with cortisone, they can be treated with exercise, they can be treated with radiofrequency ablation, treating the nerve branches that plug into those joints so that people don't feel their arthritis. They can be treated with acupuncture, chiro, osteo, physio, a slew of home exercise programs, yoga, a lot of options to treat these joints that are non-surgical. And so surgery is not a typical first line for facet hypertrophy. Thanks for watching today's video. Please like and subscribe below. If you have any questions that you'd like us to address in a future video, please leave them in the comments area. If you want us to answer any questions about your care specifically, please contact the clinic directly.